So in this video, I would like to um, share with you a video that you have been sharing with me massively actually to comment on or to just kick my thoughts up on, which is a video posted by the channel the Heart of the Piano Keys. I think it's by the pianist, German pianist, I believe, um, Annika Guttler. And she makes, uh, she made a video, she's practicing or she's studying all the Chopin etudes and she has a series on practicing them and also commenting or just sharing her thoughts of that. Uh, process and on the pieces obviously as well it's uh it's pretty interesting to go through that and i want to share with you a clip of a few minutes of that video and then you know break it down and i want to give this disclaimer this is not in any stretch of imagination to critic her work as a pianist or her points i think what anik guttler is saying in the video it's obvious you can you can you can see that it's from a very honest uh, perspective. She really believes that what she shares um, is well close to the truth of uh, getting closer to what Chopin really had in mind with that etude. But there is a lot we can say about this for the simple reason that the system actually, the academic system or the conservatory system, the musical system, whatever, what have you, that um, taught her to think like that should have well, there is, at least we can blame that system because what she is actually saying is in a way, if you just have the argumentation, put it, the arguments next one to next to another, it's not so difficult to see that the dog is biting in its own tail. And so I suggest we go through the video a few minutes. There is a lot more in that video that we were that we will cover in this. I will link it in the description box, of course. It's important to say to give you a little bit of uh, um, uh, you know summary of what she's saying before the, uh, we enter her video. She makes the point that based upon the metronome mark, which is in that case in that case of that etude is hundred for the eighth note, people play actually that etude at half speed so way too slow and she thinks she believes that people play slower even much slower um, because of the name that in the 19th century was given to this etude which is la tristesse but again uh, annie guttler questions that and she um, gives a fragment of the piece in how people play it today, like it's almost 50, so whole beat, what we would say whole beat. And then she also plays the piece in um, about 100. I give you the last fragment of that, and then we see what she has to say, and we um, break it a little bit down. Now, in my opinion, I think it's a little bit too fast, let's say. Maybe I'm just also too used to all the slow recordings of this piece. And also nowadays we know that there are some metronome numbers, especially in the Chopin tweets, where you know that it's it's just way too fast. Maybe there was a problem with his metronome or whatever, I don't know. However, even if we slow it down, like let's say from 100 to 80, it would still be way faster than most of the people are playing it. Now with this new tempo, it changes obviously the whole character of the piece. Like this faster tempo, it makes it more singable, more danceable. Like it's it's way more lively than before. It's not sad anymore. <laughs> One thing that is, in my opinion, very important also is there is a middle part of this piece where most of the people are suddenly changing the tempo extremely, like they are basically playing double the tempo. But again, this is not written in the scores. If Chopin really wanted to have a completely different tempo, he would write it inside. Here he is writing poco più animato, which means a little bit more animated. It's not like, yeah, we're going on the highway, let's go, presto. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just, you know, a little bit fast. Most of the time people are starting way too slow and then when the middle part comes they are starting way too fast. So the change of tempo is so big that they are a little bit overwhelmed and also they just don't get the right tempo and then the con bravura part starts and everybody's like scared of this part and like... Uh, fuck. 
So if we would just read carefully what the composer wrote inside, we could choose a tempo which is a little bit closer to each other. It would still be a little bit faster in the middle part, but you're already preparing yourself from the beginning on to this tempo and also it's not like a super big jump to get this tempo. She says, if we would read carefully what the composer would wrote, would have, would have written inside the score, we would choose a tempo that is more closer to each other. Except you do not take the tempo that the composer had in mind, which was eighth note hundred. And now we can discuss about whether it's single beat, then it would literally mean eighth note hundred. When it would be old way of reading the metronome like a pendulum, it would be, as you know, eighth note hundred would represent the full wing of the eighth note which would be like then divided into two each tick would give the 16th note well that might may sound very new and kind of uh, scary to you if you're new to the wbmp that's what it is there is a link in the description box to a video that explains you exactly that and then by the way you would end up in eighth note 50. so at one hand you say actually your eighth, eighth note hundred that's the metronome mark given by chopin which points to a much faster tempo leading to a piece that is like lively danceable not like you know the vivace which is originally also the uh, tempo indication she's mentioning that at the beginning of the video as well that chopin had in mind when he was writing the uh, the manuscript but it published he published the piece under the term lento so eighth note hundred is then good enough to like you know we speed up to a tempo that is danceable or lively or whatever but when it comes down to really sticking to that tempo that you actually used as to um, argue as a main argument to speed up you say yeah it's it's too fast to my taste so let's bring it down to 80. well 80 or 100 is a considerable difference and if you go to her video it's actually excellent uh, exercise to see what the difference is from 100 to 80 it's a complete different piece so if you're using that metronome mark again, then stick to that. So there is something already there that just from the start makes no sense. And then she says, and I cannot blame her again, disclaimer, I am not criticizing her. She should have had teachers that were telling her the truth, which is not like Chopin's metronome was broken or whatever. And you see actually in the video when she says, when she uses that argument, there's a lot of like cutting and editing there. But I understand because what you're actually saying, listen, when Chopin's metronome would have been broken, by the way, we know from uh, students like Mikuli and others that his metronome never left the piano during the lessons. So what you're actually saying then is he wrote great music, but other than that, he was kind of an idiot, right? Because if you, throughout your entire career, as such, I mean, a high level composer and musician don't know that your metronome is broken in a way that all the tempi, that many tempi are like implayably fast. Well, that that's quite telling about the intell intellectual level of Chopin and his contemporaries and his entourage, so to say, because nobody noticed that. Again, I don't blame the pianist here. Uh, I don't shoot on the pianist, but is it so hard to just take one step back and to realize like this doesn't make any sense? This doesn't make any sense. If Chopin writes 100 eighth note, and I'm using that metronome mark to justify my faster tempo, at the same time, reducing the tempo again to 80, and then at the same time, rejecting other metronome marks by Chopin for being too fast. There is something really fundamentally wrong, since yes, there are many tempi of Chopin too fast, and it's not only the etudes. Go to his concerti. Go to the slow movements of his concerti. Who is playing those movements in the tempi, in the metronome marks indicated by Chopin? In, in, in a way, it's remarkable that someone who's that well educated, and again, I don't blame her, it are her teachers that should have been saying that to her all the time. We don't know what's happening with Chopin's metronome marks. They seem too fast. But in the cases that we can play it at the beginning of the, of, you know, then it's fine. Then we're using those metronome marks to make the case for an interpretation of the metronome marks that do not make sense 
for other pieces where it's simply too fast. In those cases where the metronome max is too fast and we cannot play it, we will go to the story of maybe his metronome was broken, but only in those pieces we cannot play, not in the pieces where we can demonstrate that the metronome max works in a single beat interpretation. And now granted, this whole discussion that we have on this channel or this reconstruction of historical metronome marks in whole beat, that not everybody is just thinking about that. And when you just look at these metronome marks from a distance, you will say like, yeah, whatever, what can you say? But when you're diving into it, like here, you should know there is, it's not so hard to see there is something wrong because guess what? It's not only for Chopin. Shall we go to Beethoven? Shall we go to Schumann? Shall we go to Brahms' concerti? He didn't leave a uh, lot of metronome marks, but uh, I mean, those are pretty fast, like unplayably fast. Shall we go to other composers, perhaps like Hori Hertz, Kalbrenner, Ries? I mean, Czerny, shall we not forget our good old Czerny? All these metronome marks suffer from the same disease, which is they are too fast. And yet in the entire 19th century, nobody seemed to care or there was no problem at all. And then make the reflection like, if that's the case, maybe their metronome marks weren't broken, which by the way, it's not possible. A metronome works or not, they are just double weights. So the, temp the, 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 the tempo indication or the tempo the metronome gives when it works is always correct. So that in that context, it should be not so hard to think like, listen, it's not Chopin's metronome mark that was wrong, or metronome that was wrong. It's our way of interpreting. It's why our way of reading, they were using the metronome in a different way. If Chopin marks 108 note, he means tick, 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 and every other tick, it's just the eighth note. And the 16th notes are um, indicated by the ticks of the metronome. It's a principle that goes back to the Renaissance music where you had a tactus with also defining in two points up and down, Arsis thesis, the, um, you know, the semi brevis in that, but I'm digressing. I don't want to digress in. Uh, in 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 that regard. So, final point I I make here is 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 a remark she makes at the beginning of her video, which I can understand. She says like I'm opposing the idea of following labels that have been given or names that have been given in the past um, to uh, to pieces like this one, like La Tristesse, because it picks a kind of it gives a kind of direction that not always necessarily matches that of the composer. Fair enough. Um, though I have to make this point that when those names go back really a long time ago, it is worth diving into the context and also the history uh, about that name. Who gave it and why did they give it like that? So, and then she says like, this piece is not at all sad. It's not a piece that, you know, I want to kill myself. That's literally what she says. It's more like that's all more reserved like for pieces like the Opus 10 number six or the Opus 25 number seven. But what she doesn't realize is that those pieces, we also play half the speed. So those metronome marks given for those etudes that she refers to as let's preserve that sadness for those pieces, we also have to speed up twice because guess what that metronome mark is also never followed those etudes are also in the range of the whole beat compositions that still are played traditionally i don't know in that range of whole beat so it doesn't make sense in this regard you cannot isolate one piece and then say for the other pieces doesn't count there i follow the whole beat interpretation so um i guess that she didn't know about that but Maybe she will discover, like, when she goes to that metronome mark, she will go, oh, shit, yeah, we are playing that way too slow as well. And there also will be severe um, difficulties in, 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 go, in going into the tempo of Chopin. By the way, Chopin, we've just made a video on the Chopin competition. He was not particularly what you would say, like, a very strong player uh, that could do all of that stuff that we today, like, mysteriously forgot how to technically do all of that. And then really final point I want to make, if you listen to her interpretation at the end, at 88th note, of course, there is not much wrong with that playing. Of course not. It's beautifully played within the mainstream today's way of play piano playing. 
but if you go into the score, if you really want to follow the score, we have fingerings of Chopin, we have pedal indications by Chopin. That's not followed here. It's absolute, it's, the pedal is used all over the place. So that's something that Chopin didn't want you to do. He also wants you to follow his fingering. I don't have the impression when you would be a student of Chopin, that Chopin would be like, yeah, fingerings are individual, um, different for each hand. And so it's okay by any stretch of imagin imagination that you can follow your own finger. He would not do that. He would want you to stick to his fingerings. Why? Because in combination with the pedal indication, which is like not easy to understand, you will have a very different way of playing. And in the case of this Opus 10 number 3, it's a real challenge. You'll have to suggest a legato, cantable, melody and the right hand without the pedal. And now you, you could say like this is impossible. It's not impossible. Granted, that's easier on an early piano than on a modern Steinway. So I'm not saying that you cannot add a little bit of pedal when you really need that, but don't do it be before going there because that's following the score. And really final remark is when you rightfully pointed out at the beginning or in the middle of the video that in the middle part of the etude, Chopin writes a poco più animato, which not means like a lot faster, Okay, so we're talking about subtleness, even in the case where Chopin indicates a slight change of tempo. Even there, it's like very subtle, a little bit. But when she demonstrates the, 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 eighth, the eighth note version, in that middle section, there is a rubato. I, I tried to measure the tempo, it's quite impossible. It's like going down in tempo, slowing down, speeding up, up to... Over 100, slowing down again. All the difficult passages, of course, are started really slowly. I get it. That's the way we play today. If you want that tempo reconstruction that is really so important for the character, as is pointed out even in this video, then stick to the tempo throughout the entire piece. And when that's not possible, don't do these fake rubato things, which really was something that Chopin would oppose. So... Again, guys, there, there is a lot to say about this, and I don't want to criticize this uh, the Annie Gutler here. It's, but yeah, it's 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 a representation of the mainstream um, uh, opinion, and in that sense, it's really telling and important, and also interesting to comment up uh, upon because it shows the inconsistency of the today's stories, you know. It shows that we have work to do, and it also shows that we what we present here on this channel, we don't need those explanations. We take our metronome, we put it on 108 note, and we start playing, and there is no problem. The character of the piece, that of course is determined by the way of the tempo, by, by the tempo, because changing the tempo is changing everything. That's why it's so important to have that tempo right, and that's so that's why it's so important, guys. Do not deflect upon the problem and take one isolated case and then say, yeah, we know that other tempi might be just because of the broken metronome. No, we're talking about Chopin, a genius, the highest level as a composer, probably. And so take his indication seriously and see what the result is. See where it leads you, but be consistent. And when you have the WBMP, the whole beat metronome practice, there is no problem. There is no need for deflection theories or ideas or whatever. There is no mystery. And it's not simple either. There is a level of virtuosity there that's maybe not reflected in finger speed always, though the A minor etude, um, it's pretty uh, impressive, certainly at on the period piano. But there is a kind of virtuosity of expression needed there that goes way beyond any virtuosity in terms of speeding, of, of playing fast notes. So there you have it. I thought it uh, was worth sharing with you. Thanks for all of those who shared this video. And if you have other videos or other articles that um, you want me to comment upon, you know, just leave it in the, in the, in the comment box or send me an email and... Um, if I think it's interesting to share or it highlights or it, you know, it can clarify a point that we make, I will be happy to share that with you. 
Okay. Thanks for being here, guys. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates and uploads that we do. And if you would like to support us and push us through these barriers, for instance, for writing an insanely thick book on tempo reconstruction, consider becoming a patron. There's also a link for that in the description box. Okay. And if you do so, we see each other soon again.